There are five learning objectives for Chapter 5, and the comic strip here is that I totally understand your extreme risk aversion. Now hand over your mattress and let's slip into some comfy corporate bonds. It is often viewed that corporate bonds are a less risky investment when compared to corporate stock. So we've seen this before, and this is our flowchart that looks at the valuation of an investment asset. And so the top section we've, we've seen before, and we spent quite a bit of time on free cash flow and determination of that for historical analysis. In the future, we'll look at the projections for free cash flow. But today we're going to focus on the bottom section. And you'll see that the bottom section shows the weighted average cost of capital. And we've seen how important that is as a hurdle rate required for the company to earn. And we're specifically focusing on this piece of weighted average cost of capital, the cost of debt. So the cost of debt, as you recall, is either a bank loan, like a notes payable, or a bond, which is a larger financing that is formed in the capital markets. So this entire chapter is on bonds. So let's look at some of the basic provisions on a bond contract. So this is a theoretical example of Ford Motor Company. And you'll see on the face of the bond, it shows certain things. The principal amount, sometimes we see this as the principal amount, but it's normally just called face. And in this case, it's $5,000. So this is the target selling price of the bond. Now, notice I said target because a company cannot determine exactly what the value of that bond would be. So it, it proposes this particular set of financial terms. So first term is the amount of money. So that's the face. Second is the issuance date. And that's the date on which the bonds are issued. And that starts the calculation of interest. So it's kind of like a starting point for all bonds. The third is maturity date. The importance of the maturity date is on that date, you get all your money back. So if you're the holder of the bond, on that date, the maturity date, you will get a check in this example of for $5,000. The fourth provision is the coupon interest rate. And I'm focusing on the word coupon because that is the amount that is promised on this bond. And it is the determination of the regular interest payments. So you take the coupon interest rate times the dollar amount of the bond. So in this case, it's eight and seven eighths percent. We multiply eight and seven eighths percent times 5,000. And that's the annual amount of interest that would be paid by Ford Motor Company to whoever holds the paper. And so that's why coupon rate is important. It determines the cash flow that is associated with the bond. And finally, the terms. And term here is time. And so most uh, bonds are semi-annual. Some are annual, some are quarterly. We will start our analysis of bonds or lecture on bonds on annual because it's easier for us to just think about annual interest rates. And then in the second video, we'll look at the variations, including what happens when we go from annual to semi-annual. Let's keep it simple for now and just say every bond pays interest once a year. I mentioned that many students in my experience find bonds confusing. So here's my explanation as to why I think that happens. First, the bond is a contract for a specific amount of payments made into the future. And those future payments, as just mentioned on the Ford Motor example, are interest payments based on a coupon rate plus the full face amount at the end of the term. Now that doesn't sound too bad, right? You get a re regular interest payment and a big check at the very end. However, the bond is paying on the coupon rate. You remember my emphasis on that word? But that's not necessarily reflecting what somebody will pay for it. So an example would be, let's say you offer 8% as the bond interest rate. However, when you go to the marketplace, the marketplace looks at the risk of the bond, the prospects for your company, the current interest rate environment of what else is out there in treasury bills or other forms of fixed income return. And they say, you know what? Your bond is not worth 8%. I need 9% in order to buy your bond. So rather than walk away and not sell the bond, you may be saying, okay, I will let you earn 9% on my bond. And the way we do that is not by changing the interest rate on the bond instrument. That would be very cumbersome because there's a lot of SEC filings related to a bond. Instead, we lower the price of the bond. So if we lower the price of the bond, by definition, it increases the yield to the investor. So if you paid $100 for an 8% bond, that means you're happy getting an 8% return. However, 
if you pay less than a hundred dollars for that bond then your yield would be higher because the yield would be eight percent divided by a smaller number and we'll go look into yield to maturity later but right now i'm just showing the mechanism that the interest rate is not determined by the coupon rate but really the interaction of the yield to maturity and the terms of the bond in this particular example very specific example if the investors want nine percent return and the company is offering an eight percent coupon rate on a hundred dollar bond then we could change the price to and i'll show you the computation in a moment 99.11 dollars if the investor pays 99.11 dollars for a 100 face amount bond that person will receive a yield of 9%. That's how the markets work. 